We work on experiments all the time at the Lewis Armstrong Middle School. We have recorded some of our experiments for students to review. I wanted to talk about observations and how when you think that you observe things that you really don't observe things that you think you observe. And I want to show you what your observation skills right at this moment appear to be like. So I'd like everybody to look in their notebook at page 7. No, page, eight. page 7. Eight. And on page 7, there is a KWL chart. Okay. Now, dollar bill. Something that grandma has put in your hand and said, here, save this. And you've, you've been here for a while. 10 years or 11 years or some of you are 12. You've seen a dollar bill for a long, long time. And today, I'm going to show you that even though you've seen a dollar bill all your life, you've never really observed a dollar bill. So, on page 7 in the K box of the KWL chart, I would like you to write down as much information as you know about a dollar bill. Would you do that for me now? Whatever you know about a dollar bill, would you write that for me in the K box of the KWL chart on page 7? Do that now. Now, it is a copy. Um, however, in the United States, um, as long as the copy that's being made is not in color, and not the same size as a real one. Because if I start making money the same size as real money and the same color as real money, then I'm doing what? It's a C word. Copyright. Well, I'm, I am breaking the copyright law and I'm counterfeit. And we're not, we don't want to do that. So, I, I absolutely don't want to do that, but I need to show you something. So, we're going to look at side A of this paper. Please don't look at side B until I ask you to. Because you're spoiling it. You don't have anything. I've got it in my hand. Uh, don't spoil it. At table. There was a question at table number one about whether or not money is paper. They say it is, but here's something to try. Of course, you have to ask mom and dad about this. You take a dollar bill, put it in one pocket of a pair of pants, cut a piece of paper the same size as a dollar bill and put it in the other pocket of your pants and wash them. And then when you're done washing them, look at what you have in your pocket. And then you decide what you have. And you decide if it's made out of paper or not. And then you come back and you tell them. Yes. Dollar bill printed here. And you can see the front and back of a dollar bill. Things that you've seen all your life. Um, if there was one um, on the street, you would sit there. How many people would know it was a dollar bill if you found, like, you just saw one lying on the ground? Um, how many people, if it was, like, sticking out of a locker, you would know? Okay. So you would, you have, how many people are absolutely positive they would know a dollar bill? I would know you absolutely would know a dollar bill. You know it, like, you know the back of your hand. I'm, you've heard that thing? I'm about to show you, you know nothing about the back of your hand? Oh, okay, so now I would like you to turn this paper over to side B. And now, on side B, I have drawn two rectangles. 
And I have divided the rectangles up into sections. Okay? Um, I have taken all the pieces that belong on both sides of the bill, and I've cut them up and I've put them down at the bottom, and I've given all of the pieces numbers. Those pieces are now pieces of a puzzle that need to be put back where they belong by you who know what a dollar bill looks like. Because you've observed it so well in the 10 or 11 years that you've been here on this earth and have had dollar bills in your hand. But I have one done for you already. So let's look at my sample. I have taken George Washington's face. And next to George Washington's face, there is a large or small number five. I have taken the number five and I have put it back where it belongs on the bill. And then I have crossed George Washington's face off the list because I have used it. And I don't want to accidentally use it again. Your job now is to tell me without looking, without looking, from your memory, from your wonderful observation skills of the past, where all of those pieces go. Let's see if you can do this. We can't. Oh, I see it. Okay. So please do this for me now. And please don't ask anybody for help. And don't hold the paper up like this so the people on the other side of the table can see. And don't go like this. Don't go like that. Don't go like this. Don't go like this. Okay. Hold it flat on the table. Don't take dollars out of your pocket. Saw that. Oh, Do this without looking. All you can use are your past observation skills. So why did you put number 15 there? Because it's small and like, I remember the dollar bill is like on the lower corner. And I don't think it would go here because it's kind of... Longer than this? Yeah. Okay. That's where you think it belongs. Yeah. Why? Is it wrong? I'm not saying if it's wrong. It's your opinion right now. So why did you put number 11 way up in that skinny box up at the top there? Because it's small and skinny like that. But so is United States of America. Why did you choose to put a uh, Federal Reserve note up there? Well, because that's smaller than that one. See, that one's like that and that one's like that. Okay. Sounds like a good reason. Why are you crossing out all of those number 23s? Because I would put them up here. Oh. Okay, so you're using those. By the way, here's a hint. If the box is small, the item is small. If the box is long and skinny, the item's probably long and skinny. It has to fit in the box I've drawn. You're gonna edit that out. People need some cheat time. Me! Okay, I will give you 10 seconds of cheat time. <laughs> 10, okay. Five, 9, eight, seven. Seven. Yes. Eight. Let's go. Seven. Six. 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 <laughs> Whoa, I don't know what to do. Five. Oops, I dropped something. Four. Uh oh. Wait, 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 wait. Three. Two. Do <laughs> something. One. She <laughs> times over. Yes, I'm sorry. Cheat time is now over. Talking <laughs> <laughs> on that paper, I'll explain later 
write your name at the top of it so that it doesn't get lost because you're going to leave it on your desk for a minute. And I need you to take your Bob notebook and to meet me over here. But leave the paper you were just working on at your desk because I don't want you taking it. Just bring your notebook, not that paper. Have a seat. All right, so you just did something. And um, was it easy to do? Yes. yes. Of course it was. It was. Um, how many people found it was doable, but not incredibly easy? It was doable. It was easy. Um, how many people found there were a few items you were really unsure of? There were some things you were sure about that belonged on the dollar bill, and there were other things that you looked at and said, that was there. <laughs> How many people saw something that you ab absolutely did not know was there? Me. Me. What did you not know was there? I didn't know that. Oh, it's not. Uh, I didn't know that there was like the one. Little tiny things at the bottom oh, of Washington, D.C. That. Oh. that you didn't know what? I didn't know that was like tiny little the that there were like letters. Where were those letters you saw? Oh, that there are letters. Oh, there are like Washington D.C. here. There are many things in a dollar bill that are hidden all over. Well, um. You tell me why they would hide. It makes it harder to copy. Yes. It does make it harder to copy when there are a lot of pieces of information that are given there. And notice that on this particular bill, I put down something and I pointed to a lot of things. And I changed the color of the arrow so that I can point to it so that when I drew on top of the bill, I made it so that you could see what I was doing um, because there are no red marks on this bill in the printing of the bill. So that if I wrote on top of it with red, you can see what I did. And I started pointing to things like um, the note paper position. Bills aren't printed one at a time. They're printed on a big sheet of paper. Yeah, and, yeah, and, they're, yeah they're, and they're what? Yeah, after they're done. They're, and they're cut up. Um, there are two serial numbers. So in case the bill gets torn, both serial numbers have to be on the bill. So I can rip off a piece here, or I can rip off a piece there, but if I rip the bill right in half, and say now I've got two bills, I can bring it to the bank, they will not give you two bills. They will not give you anything for it. They will give you one bill. No, you have to have both serial numbers. No, but you have to have the two pieces. Yes, if I have the two pieces, or if, if I have like a piece missing from this side, they'll still give me a new bill as long as both serial numbers are there. No, but if you have If one of the serial numbers are missing, they will not give you another bill for it. They have to have both. Um, there are many things on a dollar bill that I really, really never think Have about this. Somebody hands you a dollar bill. What exactly do you do with Go spend it? Waste it. it. You what? Go spend, Go spend it. it. Go spend it. Does it? And even when somebody hands it to you, do you stand there with it in your fan looking at it like it's a piece of art? No. Do you well do you hang it on the wall and admire it? No, some people do. Well, there are people. Like oh. Wait a minute. Where did you see that? In a restaurant or in a laundromat. My mom has one in there. How many people have ever seen sometimes in a restaurant, like when the restaurant first opens, people give them some good luck bills and they hang them up like as a decorative thing in picture frames? So there are some people that take stuff like that and do it. Do you want to know something? If somebody hands you money and you put it in your wallet, and it might be the most wonderful piece of art, because this is a wonderful piece of art. But if it goes into your wallet where you just don't see it, you just don't notice about a lot about it. You don't, you don't notice a lot about it. Well, there are many, many things that are there. 
There are many, many things that are there. So I'd like you to open up your Bob notebook to page 8 and 9. And now, I want us to see if we can find some things. Now, I have here... A piece of the back of a dollar bill. This is the eagle. Okay? I've got the eagle on the back of a dollar bill. Something important about the number 13. For this. Why? Yeah. You know, this thing about 13. Using some of their five senses to carefully look at parts of a dollar bill that they have never really seen before so that at a later time they can recall this information is called observation. Yes, they have seen things in the past, but they have not really observed them. They will not forget the arrows in one talon. They will not forget the leaves in another talon, the stars they have observed today. These are things that now are part of their memory and things that they will not forget. Well, it's a special. It's called an olive branch. When I give somebody an olive branch, I'm offering them a sign of peace. I'm trying to say, let's make peace with each other. Can I have one? Well, they have them in other countries. This country, I don't think, is really warm enough to grow olive trees. Olive trees also are, can grow for thousands of years. So why do we have that? As well, I don't know. There might be some in the United States. I just know that if you're going to grow them, you need to grow them where it's very warm. But if I count the leaves, there are 13 leaves. Tomorrow in class, we will go over what we have learned about the word observe. We will define the word observe, and we will add the word to our class glossary. There are 13 stripes. Now, if I start paying attention to that, and now if I just say, how many, you're going to, right? So what I would like you to do on page 8 and 9 is to find things for me. Things that no one ever asked you to look for. Things no one ever asked you to look for because you need to become observers. We're good? 